Hello guys, welcome to my review of Ubuntu 18.04 LTS, one of the most anticipated Linux releases of this year. If you're coming from Ubuntu 16.04 LTS, or otherwise were still using the Unity desktop, then this release represents a massive overhaul as Canonical has changed from Unity back to the GNOME desktop. That being said, a lot of work has been done to make the transition feel as smooth as possible. On the other hand, if you're coming from Ubuntu 17.10, or trying out Ubuntu for the first time ever, or the first time in a long time, you'll be glad to know that a lot of small improvements and bug fixes have been put in place since 17.10, like for instance, reverting to xorg instead of Wayland as a default session, and fixing a long time memory leak in GNOME 3. Either way, Ubuntu 18.04 LTS is promising to become a memorable release, with rock-solid stability, as expected from every LTS version, and improved usability if you like the GNOME desktop. Let's start this review by Ubuntu's installer itself, since there's an important new option, a minimal installation option, which includes only the web browser and basic utilities, whereas the normal and default installation option includes the web browser, utilities, office software, games, and media players. Canonical was also planning on including an install time opt-out option from their new data collection program. However, as you can see, there's no such option on the installer itself. What they've done instead was to provide a post-install wizard that allows you to opt out from data collection. In my opinion, that's a reasonable way to do it and still gives you full control, while at the same time, it should also help Ubuntu collect more data from people willing to. Let's go with a normal installation. And we're done with installation. Let's log in into our new system. As you can see here, the new default session says Ubuntu, which is the xorg session, instead of Ubuntu on Wayland, like it was in Ubuntu 17.10. Well, this is different. As soon as you log in into your newly installed system, Ubuntu presents you this wizard that starts with a welcome screen. What's new in Ubuntu? Ubuntu 18.04 works differently from other versions. And then it shows you the major differences between Unity and GNOME 3. In GNOME 3, there's the window switcher on the top left, the activities button, and then the launcher on the left, the apps button on the bottom left, and then the application menu, clock and calendar, the system menu, and crucially, the close button on the right instead of the left. Let's click next. Live patch. Canonical live patch helps keep your computer secure by applying some updates that would normally require restarting. Well, this is quite useful, although you'll need an account to set it up. Moving on to the next screen, help improve Ubuntu. Well, this is the new data collection program from Canonical that I mentioned earlier in this video. During the installation process, there were no questions about it. Instead, they allow you to choose whether to share your data or not during this first login wizard and they also show you what sort of information you will be sharing, like for instance your hardware. Would you like to send this information? As you can see, yes is selected by default. You have to opt out by selecting no. As usual, when reviewing a new distro, I'll start by checking the memory usage out of the box. 1.2 gigabytes. Let's quickly go through the new interface of Ubuntu, GNOME 3. This is the system menu, the clock and calendar, the activities, 
and the application menu. These are the applications installed out of the box. And let's also go through the settings. Background. These are the wallpapers that ship with Ubuntu 18.04 LTS. I like this grey version. But perhaps let's stick with the default one. Dock. You can enable or disable auto hide. Change the icon size like this. Notifications. Online accounts. An easy way to set up your privacy. Network, devices, and as you can see, we're running version 3.28.1 of GNOME. What about Nautilus? Well, there's been some restyling of this left panel, which is darker now and has these icons on the left. Also, if you notice, there's no way to star any file as favorite, which is a new feature of GNOME 3.28. What happens is that Ubuntu decided to keep version 3.26 of Nautilus, although they've upgraded to version 3.28 of GNOME, because they wanted to preserve desktop icons. And this feature, the desktop icons, isn't present in Nautilus version 3.28. Another new feature of GNOME 3.28 can be seen in Calendar. If you notice, now there are weather icons. And I should also mention that the Calendar seems to be working flawlessly now. Whereas before, when I reviewed Ubuntu 18.04 LTS Beta 2, this app was crashing a lot. I couldn't really run Calendar without getting a crash. And it seems to be fixed now. And of course, no review is complete before running a web browser. In this case, Firefox. Let's check its version. And it's version 59.0.2, .2, which is the current stable version of Firefox Quantum. For those of you who haven't yet tried the version of Ubuntu that uses GNOME, the way to switch between running applications is by going to the Activities Overview, where you can see which applications are running and switch between them like these. Hmm, what else do we have here? LibreOffice. Let's also quickly check its version. It's version 6, which is quite fortunate. Since this is an LTS version of Ubuntu, it's quite desirable that we have recent versions of some of the most important software, which is the case with LibreOffice, which has just recently upgraded to version 6. If you don't like the command line tools to manage your packages, like apt-get for instance, you can always run Ubuntu software.
Let's open a terminal and run new fetch to get some nice stats about our system. So, of course, we're running Ubuntu 18.04 LTS. And the kernel that we're running is version 4.15. Ubuntu installs out of the box 1625, well, actually 1622 packages since I had to install Git, which pulled three new packages. And the theme is good old ambience. Although there were some talks about including a new community theme in this version of Ubuntu. It ultimately didn't make it through. Ubuntu 18.04 LTS will also for the first time include some snaps that come installed. Let's see which ones. So, there's the SCORE and GNOME 3.26 snaps that are base snaps, on top of which Canonical has also included GNOME Calculator, GNOME Characters, GNOME Logs, and GNOME System Monitor has snaps. And to wrap it up, some final words about Ubuntu 18.04 LTS. I must say that, as usual, this long-term support version of Ubuntu seems pretty stable and polished. You can definitely see that a lot of work took place since the last beta release. Small lingering bugs have been fixed and everything runs smooth now. Crucially, a long-standing memory leak was fixed in GNOME before the final release of 18.04. From what I've seen, RAM usage no longer escalates even after several hours of usage. Regarding usability, I find GNOME 3.28 extremely intuitive and minimalist. Therefore, I certainly recommend Ubuntu 18.04 to new users, as well as anyone who needs to be productive. Ubuntu will stay out of your way, letting you focus on the task at hand. However, if you need more features and customization options, I recommend Ubuntu 18.04 and the amazing Plasma 5.12 desktop. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see more reviews like this one, please hit the subscribe button below. As always, use Linux long and prosper.